Northwest Federal Savings. It's Northwest Federal Savings Time, 63 hours a week. Good morning, Mom, and hello out there in Radio Land. This is Chuck Shaden in the hall closet for Thursday morning, October 28th, 1976, from our Nostalgia Broadcast Center on Chicago's northwest side, up to the top of the Sears Tower and out on WXFM to you. We have a closet filled with lots of goodies today. Frank Sinatra, B. Wayne, Bing Crosby, Victor Moore, Boris Karloff, and Lionel Hampton. That's Lionel Hampton there on the piano stomp, stomping its way into your hearts early in the morning here on WXFM. I'm Chuck Shaden, and we're here every day, Monday through Friday, from 7 until 9, with all the good old radio shows. It's four minutes past uh, 7 o'clock Northwest Federal Savings Time. Sunny, warmer, and becoming windy today with a high in the low 50s. Tonight, fair, not quite so cold with a low in the middle or upper 30s. And then tomorrow, Friday, should be a nice day, mostly sunny and warmer with a low in the, rather with a high in the low 60s. It's 34 degrees along the lakefront now, 24 at O'Hare, 25 at Midway. Humidity is 78 percent, wind out of the southwest at 7 miles an hour. Uh, tomorrow morning in our hit parade, in our, uh, well, we're going to have a hit parade broadcast next, and then we have a Philco Radio Time with Bing Crosby. Tomorrow we'll have Ozzie and Harriet and the Jack Benny program. And let's take a look at the old Nostalgia Newsletter. Well, I should say the new Nostalgia Newsletter and see what's coming up next week. Uh, Monday morning, we'll have Eddie Cantor. We're going to have the first of five consecutive and related Eddie Cantor shows next Monday for five, the five Mondays in November. 
We have five related Cantor shows. I love to do this. I love to put this together like that. Eddie Cantor receives a threatening warning uh, of, uh, suggesting that he does not run for president. And in the course of this time, uh, you know, everybody was running for president in those days, too. And in the course of time, uh, over these five shows, Cantor is kidnapped. And, oh, it's a, it's a fun sequence of shows. So for five Mondays in November, we'll have Eddie Cantor shows for you. Also Monday, an Alan Young show. Tuesday, Jack Carson, Fibber McGee and Molly, and Captain Midnight. Uh, Wednesday, Armis Brooks and Eddie Albert show. Thursday, Phil Harris, Alice Faye, Larry Clinton, and the National Barn Dance. And uh, Friday morning of next week, Bobby Hackett and his orchestra from Nick's on 7th Avenue in Greenwich Village in New York back in 1949, and the Jack Benny program. I have a lot of good things uh, in the mornings here from 7 until 9. You can keep tabs on all those good things if you subscribe to our Nostalgia Newsletter and Radio Guide. A year's subscription to our Nostalgia Guide is now only $7, and you, I think you'll get your money's worth and good reading and good information to get your memories worth too. 32 pages of fun and memories, page after page of photos and articles from and about the good old days, as well as the complete schedule of old-time radio shows we broadcast here in the mornings on WXFM, on Saturday afternoons on WNIB, and on uh, Thursday evenings on WBEZ. You get the complete broadcast schedule with lots of information about our programming, dates of original shows, um, original broadcasts, performers, guests, and even more. Subscribe now to our Nostalgia Newsletter. Call us at 545-2260. That's 545-2260. Give us your name and address. Your subscription will begin with the November issue. Call us today, and we'll get that in the mail today, and uh, you, uh, you'll get a, an invoice with the first issue for your one-year subscription, $7. Dial us up now at 545 22 Six zero. If you're kind of busy this morning and you can't get to the phone right away, well, we understand that. Why don't you just jot the number down? A little steam on the window? Just write the number on the window there. Mom and Dad will love it, right? 545-2260. Or carve it in a pumpkin. Maybe that's what you're doing this weekend. But give us a buzz, and uh, we'll set up the newsletter for you. Jack Benny, uh, Bergen and McCarthy, Martin and Lewis, Cary Grant and George Raff, Bill Stern, um, RKO Radio Pictures, Larry Clinton, and the Chicago Surface Lines. Those are the things you'll read about in our Nostalgia Newsletter for November. 545-2260 is our number, or you can send $7 to Nostalgia Newsletter, Box 421, Morton Grove, 60053. From 53 to 43 now, as we go back to November 13th of 1943, this is the Lowell Lucky Strike Hit Parade. This is an Armed Forces Radio rebroadcast of the show, so there's no um, uh, Lucky Strike mentioning in this. But um, I think you will enjoy this show with Frank Sinatra and B. Wayne. And in this case, uh, announcer Kenny Delmar is, uh, is doing the honors in place of Andre Baruch, who was uh, uh, very much a part of the hit parade. From November 13th of 1943, your hit parade. <laughs> sailors and marines of the United Nations, a special service division rebroadcast of the most popular songs in America. Here's your hit parade. <laughs> It's Frank Sinatra leading off your hit parade with the tune that rates Lucky Seven this week. Frank sings the seventh place favorite, I Heard You Cried Last Night. I heard you cried last night And I know why last night and so did I why did you make 
the tune that's just eight places from the top tonight. And the hit paraders sing the song that your hit parade survey finds at number eight for the first time.
America, from the Atlantic to the Pacific, this tune is a solid sixth place winner. Lovely B. Wayne sings your choice for number six, Put Your Arms Around Me, Honey. <laughs> That's ACC, a lucky strike extra there on the um, uh, hit parade broadcast. I have a correction on the date of this show, if you're uh, making notes on that or if you're checking with our newsletter. I just double-checked on something, and uh, my reference material shows that this is not a broadcast from November uh, 13th of 1943. It's a broadcast from November 6th, November 6th of 1940, a week earlier. The November 13th is possibly an Armed Forces radio rebroadcast date, a date uh, when the, they'd have it for the guys in the service a week later. But the actual date of the broadcast of this show is November 6th 
of 1943. It doesn't make a great deal of difference, except that if you are making uh, notes on this and trying to keep a um, chronological order of some of these things, it's important to you. November 6th of 1943, the date of this hit parade show. Frank Sinatra will be singing the number one song from 1943 by the end of this, uh, uh, this whole show. Our whole show is called The Hall Closet. We're here in the mornings, Monday through Friday, from 7 until 9, here on WXFM 106 on your FM dial. My name is Chuck Shaden, and it might have been um, about this time in 1943 that I might have spent a Saturday. This was a Saturday night, November 6th. I might have spent a Saturday all day taking the uh, uh, Addison Street bus downtown get on the bus, the boulevard route, I think they used to call that, right? That was not Chicago Surface Lines. That was, a, that was another bus company. <clears throat> and you take that bus down Addison Street. We lived out west near Irving Park and um, Cumberland. But uh, anyway, we'd take, walk up to Addison, take the bus, and go downtown. It would take you down. The bus would go down Addison to the Outer Drive, then drive along the Outer Drive down Michigan Avenue, and then swing around and come back on State Street someplace and then get back out to the Outer Drive and down Addison Street again going back. And we take that bus and um, we go into the loop and go to the Chicago Theater. And we would, uh, we would plan on a stage show, seeing the stage show at the Chicago and the movie, and we'd make the rounds. We were always nuts for autograph, you know, we were autograph hounds, and so we'd stand at the back stage door of the Chicago Theater wait for the performers to come in, get their autographs, and then, uh, <clears throat> I've said so many times on the air, I know, we'd, we'd get their autographs, and then we'd run in, to the, we'd buy our ticket for the show, see the stage show, watch the movie, and then see the stage show again, and then run back and collect any other autographs we hadn't gotten. And they were also having, uh, they had stage shows at the, uh, at the Oriental at that time, and we'd try to do the same thing over there. And those were really exciting days for us, uh, a live big stage show. That was pre-TV, you know, and the live uh, stage shows uh, uh, were really something to see over there. Of course, the Chicago Theater has stopped having stage shows a uh, long time ago, and uh, I'll tell you, we kind of miss those things. Now, if you haven't been in the Chicago Theater recently, if you've never seen the uh, the stage at the Chicago, or if you've never uh, heard the mighty Wurlitzer organ, that they have there, you know, way back in the uh, in the 20s. The Chicago Theater is 55 years old this year, by the way. And uh, in the 20s, uh, Jesse Crawford was playing that mighty Wurlitzer organ at the Chicago Theater, and what a thing it was! That was as big an attraction as there ever was at the Chicago Theater. No matter what the movie was, no matter what the stage show was, people would flock there just to catch uh, Jesse Crawford. Uh, and then that organ would rise from the pit, you know, and there it would be, and he would start playing, and oh, it would be sensational. Oh, yeah, those were the days, weren't they? <laughs> the mighty Wurlitzer at the Chicago Theater will be presented again on uh, Thursday evening, November 4th, when the Chicago area theater organ enthusiast presents a one-night concert, uh, a special program called Those Were the Days. It's going to be a night of nostalgia. And Walter Stroney uh, will be at the console of the mighty Wurlitzer organ to present uh, some tremendous sounds on that uh, wonderful musical instrument. Uh, he will be accompanying um, uh, a silent movie, a short silent film, a uh, sing-along. Everybody who comes is going to be able to sing along, to sing along with the mighty Wurlitzer. Uh, Walter Stroning will present a salute to Jesse and Helen Crawford, the dynamic team of organists from the Chicago Theater. And he will also be having a big salute to George Gershwin with some of the great Gershwin music. And, uh, and as well as that, he's going to remember some of the great MGM musicals. We will be there, too, as your master of ceremonies and a guide to an evening of nostalgic memories as we talk about uh, the theaters in Chicago over the years, the Uptown and the, uh, the Tiffin and, uh, remember, the Garrick and the Apollo <laughs> and the Rialto and so many other theaters around. We're going to have slides of those theaters. 
And of course, we're going to remember the golden age of radio with a, uh, a segment uh, uh, highlighting some of the great sounds. And Walter Stroni at the Mighty Wurlitzer is going to play some of the theme songs of some of those great old radio shows, like um, we just heard here the theme song for Amos and Andy. This is open to the public, and you're invited. Tickets, advance sale tickets, are $3.50 each. And you can get them by mail when you send to Cato, that's short for the uh, Chicago Area Theater Organist Enthusiast, <laughs> C-A-T-O-E, <coughs> Cato, send to uh, 6244 West Eddy, Chicago 60634. You can pick up advance tickets at the Chicago Theater box office or at our MGM shop at uh, 5120 West Irving Park Road. You can give us a buzz for more information if you need them. We've also had some comments from people who said, you know, it's hard for me to get downtown, or I don't like to park downtown, or uh, one reason or another. And they said, why don't you see about the, is there going to be any special transportation? We've checked into it, and we have made arrangements with Cato to, um, to provide a single bus, uh, which will leave from Northwest Federal Savings, at, uh, at about 6.30 on Thursday evening, the uh, 4th of November. Now, the bus will, uh, you can board the bus there at Northwest Fed, and the bus will take you right down to the Chicago Theater, let you off in front of the door. You can go in, enjoy the show, and when you come out of the theater, the bus will still be waiting for you, or it will be back there, and drop you right back uh, at the, uh, the, the corner of Northwest and Federal on Irving Park Road. Now, bus transportation tickets, and we only have one bus going, so there's only 50 seats on this bus, so if you want to go, north, northwest siders want to get involved in this, tickets for the bus trip are $2. That's pretty cheap, pretty cheap, considering if you go downtown, you have to pay for parking someplace. So now the only place to get these tickets, because there's only a week left for this, and the only setup on this is that you got to get your tickets in advance so we know what we're doing with it, we have the tickets at our MGM shop at our Metro Golden Memory Shop at 5120 Irving Park Road. We have bus tickets there, and we have the Cato concert tickets there, too. The concert tickets are $3.50 each in advance of the show, and the bus ticket for round-trip transportation from Northwest Federal Savings. That's a block west of Cicero on Irving Park Road, right where the Memory Club is, you know. Uh, you can go by bus from there on Thursday night, November the 4th. Well, we're trying to make it easy for you, a little extra accommodation. So if you need more information on that, give us a buzz or pop over to the MGM shop. As I say, we only have 50 tickets, so if you want to get on the bus over there and get that luxury transportation downtown, <laughs> it might not be Chicago Motor Coach lines, <laughs> but I think it is a big CTA bus that they're having uh, go down there. So we're, we're pleased to oblige. And it's going to be a wonderful evening at the B&K Wonder Theater the Chicago Theater, Thursday, November 4th. The program begins at 8 o'clock, and you can get tickets at the MGM shop, at the Chicago Theater box office, or from Cato by mail when you send to 6244 West Eddy, Chicago 60634. I know I've talked a little bit longer about this than I should, but um, it's a very important night for me. I'm really looking forward to being on the stage of the Chicago after being, you know, in the second row from the back for so many years on Saturday afternoons, Saturday evenings. Ah, those were the days. Well, we better get back now to the day of November 6, 1943, and more of the uh, hit parade. Time now for number nine. And Frank Sinatra sings the song that the nation likes ninth best of all, if you please. Did I see moonlight and magnolia trees smile again, my darling, if you please. Please. Did I feel cool set 
Wherever a song is sung, this tune rates a big number five. B. Wayne brings you the tune that's fifth. They're either too young or too old. Too young or too old. 
Your Hit Parade continues with number four. And to sing the song that's fourth in your favor, Frank Sinatra. Frank sings Sunday, Monday, or always. Won't you tell me when we will meet again? Sunday, Monday, or always. If you're satisfied, I'll be at your side. Sunday, Monday. Tell me now what makes the world go round. When at the sight of you, my heart begins to pound and pound. And what am I to do? Can't I be with you Sunday, Monday? Frank Sinatra and uh, fans there, uh, and uh, always, I'll be loving you always. Uh, your Hit Parade broadcast from November 6th of 1943. Coming up in the next section of this, um, the numbers 3, 2, and 1, the number one song from that day just uh, 33 years ago. This is Chuck Shaden here in the hall closet on WXFM 106 on your FM dial. 34 degrees along the lakefront, 22 minutes before 8 o'clock Northwest Federal Savings Time. Is your bank open when you're busy and closed when you're not? Northwest Federal Savings knows that a good place to save is ready for you when you're ready. Ready with the answers and advice given by professionals in helping thousands just like you, but each with different individual needs. Northwest Federal's professionals can show you, too, the best way to save for a new home, a college education, or for retirement. Northwest Federal's counselors can explain all the savings plans and help you set up a savings program to meet your special needs. Home loan specialists can tailor a home loan plan to help make your dreams a reality. Bring your needs to any of five convenient Northwest Federal Savings Centers throughout Chicagoland's great Northwest Territory. If you think your needs are special, so does Northwest Federal Savings. All the time, because Northwest Federal Savings keeps the best hours yours. Savings time, 63 hours a week. A good time coming up Saturday night at Northwest Federal Savings in the community room at 4901 Irving Park Road in Chicago. We have our Memory Club movie, and it's Manpower from 1941. It stars Edward G. Robinson, Marlena Dietrich, and George Raft. It's a rip-roaring adventure about the hazards faced by the men who risk their lives 
repairing high tension lines and the tension is high too in the conflict between Robinson and Dietrich and Raft. It's an exciting film. It's a very good movie. A little different, uh, I would say. I think you will enjoy seeing uh, Eve Arden and Walter Catlett and uh, Frank McHugh and Alan Hale and uh, a lot of other Warner Brothers regulars in this film. A good movie coming up Saturday night in the Memory Club. Doors open at 7.30. Our film will begin at 8 o'clock. We have a Halloween Lucky Strike Extra for you this Saturday night. And I uh, hope you can come join us for this. Dues are a dollar and a quarter a meeting payable at the door. We'll see you there. Uh, no tricks, but a nice treat for uh, Saturday night. Now let's get back to the last of the hit parade. Here they are, the three top tunes of the week. Number three, and it's the hit paraders giving out with the nation's third place favorite. It's that pistol pack in Mama. And lovely B. Wayne sings the song that's just one step away from top honor. People will say we're in love. You are 
stars are so like mine. Your eyes mustn't glow like mine. People will say we're in love. Don't start collecting Give me my rose and my glove, sweetheart. They're suspecting things. People will say we're in Number one. Here we go with Frank Sinatra singing number one, Paper Doll. I'm gonna buy a paper doll that I can call my own. A doll that other fellows cannot steal. And then the flirty, flirty guy. With a flirty, flirty eyes, we'll have to flirt with dollies that are real. When I come home at night, she will be waiting. She'll be the truest doll in all this world. I'd rather have a paper doll to call my have a pickle my little life girl Paper doll that I can call my own. A doll that other fellows cannot steal. And then the flirty, flirty guy with their flirty, flirty eyes will have to flirt with dollies that are real. When I come home at night, she'll be there waiting. She'll be the truest doll in all this world. I'd rather have a paper doll to call my own than have a fickle-minded real. That's the Hit Parade, your Hit Parade, our broadcast from November 6th of 1943. That's the correct date of this show, November 6th, 1943. Number one song, Paper Doll. Number two, from Oklahoma, People Will Say We're In Love. And uh, Pistol Packin' Mama was the number three song. Sinatra, at, uh, 
a peak of his popularity there with the Bobby Soxers in the audience screaming and yelling and cheering. Uh, I don't know if they were as demonstrative uh, as, uh, who is it, uh, when someone, is it Humperdinck or uh, Tom Jones when they're at the mill run that the women are throwing their uh, unmentionables up on the stage at them and all that stuff. Others, uh, they throw flowers and things. I want to see what happens when we get on the stage at the Chicago Theater. You know, we're going to be there on the 4th, and uh, you know what they'll probably, <laughs> they'll probably throw some... Some old lady will throw a snood at me. <laughs> I get hit in the face with an orc with a with a stay from a girdle, a corset stay. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, that's Sinatra on the hit parade <laughs> back on November 6th of 1943. This is Chuck Shaden in the hall closet on WXFM 106 on your FM Dale. All the good old radio shows here Monday through Friday mornings from 7 until 9. 25 degrees at Midway, 10 minutes before 8 o'clock. Our cassette tape of the month for October features a pair of chilling shows from the good old days of radio. From the Weird Circle, we have Frankenstein, radio dramatization of Mary Shelley's classic novel. Then, from Hollywood Star Time, the story of Jack the Ripper, The Lodger, starring Vincent Price and Kathy Lewis. An hour's worth of great radio listening on our cassette tape of the month for October. It's only $5.00. From the Hall Closet, Box 421, Morton Grove, 60053. And um, October is rapidly running out. Uh, Monday, next Monday, is November the 1st. So you want to make sure you get this October tape right away. Get it from the Hall Closet or at any office of Northwest Federal Savings this week for sure. Also this month, we offer a Halloween special, the most famous radio broadcast of all time. Orson Welles' 1938 panic broadcast, The War of the Worlds. It's the complete full hour of amazing listening that people heard back in 1938. You can hear it now, this month only, for only $5 from the Hall Closet, Box 421, Morton Grove, 60053. If you'd like The War of the Worlds, plus our regular October tape with Frankenstein in the Lodger, simply send $10 to the Hall Closet, Box 421, Morton Grove, 60053 or get both tapes at Northwest Federal Savings or at our Metro Golden Memory Shop at 5120 West Irving Park Road. But by mail, make sure you send this week for sure. Send to the Hall Closet, Box 421, Morton Grove, 60053. <laughs>
That's Judy Garland, uh, somewhere over the rainbow. At the end of the rainbow would be um, a 1977 Eldorado, equipped with an AM and FM stereo radio and cassette player, and our cassette tape of the month. Rainbow's End is uh, Imperial Leasing in Des Plaines, and they will lease you our cassette tape of the month for only $225 a month, and you will get that AM and FM stereo radio and cassette player and that 1977 Eldorado. That's a pretty good idea from Imperial Leasing in Des Plaines. Why don't you uh, give them a call and find out all the details. Their number is 298-0011, 298-0011, or visit them at 900 East Rand Road in Des Plaines. usually have a number of um, uh, classic vintage automobiles on display over there, too. You might want to pop in and take a look at those cars. Those are not the ones that they lease you. They lease you the brand new cars and the old radio shows. Of course, I suppose you could talk to those people over there, and they'd lease you an old car with a tape of a new radio show on it. Who would want a tape of a new radio show? <laughs> well, check it out. Imperial Leasing and uh, Displays at 298-0011. Now you can get your whole house magic is clean and also get a helping hand with the laundry. Hi, this is Carmelita Pope with good news. Right now, with any Magicist order, you'll get a bottle of Ego Liquid, the heavy-duty one-step laundry detergent at no extra charge. With Ego, there's no need for pre-soaks and sprays. Of course, Magicist is the recognized expert when it comes to cleaning. So, have Magicist clean your carpeting and furniture in home or office. Or have Magicist call for, clean, and deliver your rugs and draperies. Save 20% for cash and carry. Bank cards are welcome. And Magicus sells rugs, too. Come clean now and get your quart bottle of Ego heavy-duty liquid laundry detergent at no extra charge. Chicago phones 378-8600. Suburbs see the white pages. Ask Magicus about soil retardant. It's only three cents a square foot. <laughs> Did you ever see a dream walking? Well, I did. Did you ever hear a dream talking? Well, I did. Did you ever have a dream thrill you with will you be mine? Oh, it's so grand and it's too, too divine. Did you ever see a dream dancing? Well, I did. Did you ever see a dream romancing? Well, I did. Did you ever find heaven right in your arms saying, I love you, I do? Well, the dream that was walking and the dream that was talking and the heaven in my arms was you. Well, I did Well, I did Did you ever find heaven right in your arms Saying, I love you, I do Well, the dream that was walking and the dream that was talking And the heaven in my arms was you well, the dream that was walking and the dream that was talking and the heaven in my arms was you. Maurice Chevalier, did you ever see a dream walking? We talk about our um, uh, special cassette, The War of the Worlds. Remember about a year ago on television, they did a, a TV movie, a two-hour TV movie, uh, called The Night That Panicked America, and it was a, a dramatization of the events surrounding that amazing War of the Worlds broadcast. You may remember it. We talked a lot about it, and uh, uh, it was on the air on television for a uh, two-hour TV movie special. And uh, I would have thought that they would run that every year around this time of the year because it was October 30th that the Orson Welles did that, but the show is not on this year. However, I am going to see it this weekend because I videotaped that a year ago. Now see, that's one of the good reasons for getting the Betamax videotape recorder. 
Sony makes that possible, and Townhouse TV and Appliances makes it happen. Uh, you may not be able to um, videotape that because it isn't going to be on this year, but uh, how many things are on now that you'd say, oh, I'd like to make a tradition of that? Well, you know, what about, they run Miracle on 34th Street, the movie, right? They do and they don't. You never can depend on it. They run it at 3 in the morning or 2 in the middle of the day or something. Watch it once and videotape it, and then you've got it whenever you want it. Boy, the, uh, the possibilities are amazing with the Betamax videotape system. You ought to check it out. Go on over to uh, Townhouse TV and Appliances at 7243 Tui Avenue, just west of Harlem, and see the exciting new way to watch and to save television. They're open Monday, Thursday, and Friday nights till 9, Saturday until 5. See Townhouse TV and Appliances for the Betamax videotape system. This is Chuck Shaden in the hall closet. A quick trip to the loop, and then we'll be back. Stick around and don't touch that dial. 30 seconds after 8 a.m., this is WXFM Elmwood Park in Chicago, broadcasting from Sears Tower at 106 on FM. WN Auto Repair at 5440 West Ogden in Berwyn, Illinois, says most pedestrian accidents occur during the hours of dusk or darkness. Be especially alert when walking after dark. The safety message was brought to you by WN Auto Repair. They are your precision mechanics specializing in major and minor auto repairs. They use methods from computers to auto diagnostics. They'll find your car's problems when others can't. They're also experts in the field of wheel alignments. Also brakes, shock absorbers too. Give them a telephone call, 788 788- 1850 at 788-1850 or stop in WN Auto Repair 6440 West Ogden. That's in Berwyn, Illinois, where Bill and his whole staff is always concerned with your welfare and safety. Since 1928, Miller Brothers Lumber Company has been a constant source of supply to contractors, builders, and the general public in all items of lumber and millwork. This is an ideal time to fix up the interior of your home. To do the job right, Start with the fine quality, low cost materials at Miller Brothers Lumber Company, 4918 West Lawrence Avenue. See the fabulous selection of pre finished wall panelings manufactured by Masonite, Pavco, Evans, Gyrotex, and Roseburg. Choose from a selection of 150 beautiful finishes that are on display in the paneling showroom, which is open for your convenience daily till 4 30 p.m. and on Saturday until 11 30 a.m. At Miller Brothers Lumber Company, you will also find a complete supply of lumber, millwork, insulation, roofing, ceiling tile, aluminum siding, and sectional garage doors. All items are in stock and available at lowest money-saving prices. For city and suburban delivery, call Avenue 3 3460. Miller Brothers Lumber Company is your best source of supply for all items in lumber and millwork. Miller Brothers Lumber accepts Master Charge Bank Card. 4918 West Lawrence Avenue in Chicago. In stereo at 106 from high atop Sears Tower, this is WXFM, Elmwood Park, Chicago. A nice old number. I don't know why. And you're singing it with a nice old number, too. <laughs> You're nice yourself. <laughs> Let's go then. I don't know why I love you like I do. do I don't know why you just do you never seem to want my romance the only time you hold me is when we're dancing I don't know why why I love you like I do I don't know why I just 
Bing Crosby and Lauren Bacall, no less, uh, from a 1942 broadcast, a little, uh, a little uh, squib from a show there. We've got a full Bing Crosby radio show coming up in just a moment here in the uh, hall closet. This is Chuck Shaden with you Monday through Friday mornings from 7 until 9 on the WXFM 106 on your FM dial. If you are a, a subscriber to our Nostalgia Newsletter and Radio Guide, won't you take a minute right now to call a friend? Don't call us. Call a friend and say... You know, I've been meaning to tell you about that show that's on in the mornings with the old-time radio shows. It's got another hour to go yet, and there's going to be a Bing Crosby Halloween show with Boris Karloff coming up. Uh, why don't you list, tune in at 106, 106 on your FM dial, and if you tune in right away, he'll be talking about the Nostalgia Newsletter. Now, you do that, and if you're not a subscriber to the newsletter, why don't you call us at 545-2260. And we'll be a friend to you as we uh, uh, let you in on the uh, fun and adventure and excitement that we have in the mornings here uh, throughout the week on a number of stations with all the old-time radio shows. Because our Nostalgia Newsletter and Radio Guide lists in advance the complete schedule of programs that we offer, as well as lots of articles from and about the past. 32 pages of fun and memories, our Nostalgia Newsletter and Radio Guide, a year's subscription now only $7, and you get your money's worth in good reading and good information. Page after page of photos and articles from and about the good old days, as well as our broadcast schedule. Subscribe now. Call us at 545-2260. That's 545-2260. Just give us your name and address. Your subscription will begin with the November issue. We'll include an invoice for your one-year subscription, $7. Call us at 545-2260. In the November newsletter, Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Charlie's in a football uniform on our cover. We have uh, articles, uh, reprint articles about Jack Benny, about Martin and Lewis. We have some recipes, favorite recipes of Cary Grant and George Raft, no less. From 1938, Bill Stern writes an article about the job of a football announcer. And from 1946, a great newspaper column about radio singing commercials. Plus, we have original articles. Mark Nelson's Film Clips column discusses the RKO Radio Pictures Studios. Carl Pearson writes uh, in his notes from the bandstand about Larry Clinton and the orchestra. And Dan McGuire contributes a nostalgic look back at the days of the old streetcars in Chicago. Clang, clang, clang went the trolleys. All of this and uh, more, too. Our Dime Store Classified ad page, news of our Memory Club movies, and other goodies. Subscribe now to our Nostalgia Newsletter and Radio Guide. A year subscription, $7. Begin your subscription with the November newsletter. Call us now at 545-2260. That's 545-2260. Or send $7 to Nostalgia Newsletter, Box 421, Morton Grove, 60053. Oh, what's that? Oh, okay, now there's a lot of lot more people uh, tuned in now. Right, you found us. This is Chuck Shaden, and this is our hall closet with the old-time radio show. You just got a call, didn't you, from a friend? regular listener, well, I want you to know that you're welcome to join us in the mornings here. Uh, oh, excuse me, but there's someone finding us. Wait a minute. Wait. Hold it. Hold it. No, no. Over to the left a little bit. Wait. Come back. Me, 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 me. Okay, right there. Now you've got us. That's it. This is the old-time radio show. You just got the call. Welcome. Well, don't touch that dial. Stay where you are, because right now, 
we're going to play a radio show from you from October 29th of 1947. It's a Halloween show sponsored by Philco Radio Corporation. It was called Philco Radio Time. Its star was Bing Crosby. And joining Bing on this uh, all-Halloween show are Victor Moore and Boris Karloff. Philco Radio Time. and his orchestra, the Rhythm Airs, and Bing's guests, Victor Moore, Boris Karloff, and Gail Robbins. Now, with Halloween time upon us, we bring you Philco's little hobgoblin with eyes of blue and a pumpkin, too, Bing Crosby. <laughs> hey, listen here. That was a libelous introduction if I've ever heard one. My uh, brother Everett will call on you in the morning. I'll be glad to. <laughs> I'll have you know that I've been exercising and I've got rid of my little pumpkin. <laughs> no, no. No, you haven't really gotten rid of it, Bing. You just moved it around and back. Oh. <laughs> so that's where it is. I had an idea somebody was following me all day. <laughs> Part of my equipment, huh? Well. But getting back to Halloween, that's your great time of the year. Yes, it is. You know, Bing, I've carved a very funny face out of a pumpkin. So I noticed. Cross. They can. <laughs> you remember when we were on craft? together and we had to carve our jack-o'-lanterns out of Velveeta. <laughs> what do you think Jolson and I have been doing all week? Carving, <laughs> carving. Everyone's getting ready for Halloween. There's a lot of excitement buzzing over at the Crosby Chateau. Really? Oh, yes. Gary's carving a jack-o'-lantern and Lindsay's carving a jack-o'-lantern. The twins are carving each other. And... <laughs> Even the moose. You know, my moose is getting yeah. ready for the big boogie night. Yeah, he's going to a masquerade party. Oh, fine. What sort of a costume is your moose wearing? Well, I think he's putting rubber gloves on his antlers and he's going as Dr. Kildare. <laughs> It'd be a smash. And now if I can call on Dr. Trotter and the Rhythm Airs, I've had costumes. Oh, they're all <laughs> smartly dressed tonight. Really turned out. You look much better than the six hits in the mix. <laughs> now, if I can call on Dr. Trotter and the Rhythm Airs, and we got them all standing by here, just quivering at the leash, ready to leap into the rhythm. Rhythm. Mm. We'll head for the hill country. We're going to stir up a little feuding, fighting, and a fussing. Yes, sir. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, Al Dexter is with us. <laughs> Beyond the busy highway, your lady Beyond the city strife, your lady I thought Judy Canova was on Saturday night. <laughs> we highly treasure and take great pleasure in our play way of love. Fussing and a fighting. Sometimes it gets downright exciting. Don't like them ornery neighbors down by the creek. Well, we'll be plumb out of neighbors next week. Grandma, poor old grandma. Why'd they have to shoot poor grandma? Shot her dead. She lies beneath the clover. They caught her bending over, reaching for the fat back, shooting, the fussing, and the fighting. This is the wrong that needs the righting. Let's get that funeral service over, so then we'll go feuding and fighting again. Fighting and feuding and a fussing. We are such neighborly people, peaceful and sweet, all except when we happen to meet. Daughter, baby daughter, pies and all the neighbor's chicken. Daughter, should not her. Least till she could run like the Dickens, the hitter with the stage brace. Fighting and shooting and a fuzzing. Laid it right on her, yes. No use to standing here a-cutting. Let's 
give our daughter a pistol now that she's foreign, go feuding and fighting some more. Fighting and feuding and fussing. We ain't a fooling. What did that stranger want with us? We ain't done nothing. He was a revenue agent. Yep, he was a mill. And the boys had to chuck him in a still. Liquor, mountain liquor. It's better now, it kicks you much quicker. Moonshine, mountain moonshine. Has a glow that gets you much sicker. What do you hear from your ulcer? This ain't no corner you can brighten. Load up my double barrel shotgun, I'm getting the end to go feuding and a fighting. A and a fighting. And a ah, very fine being in rhythm airs. That was slick as a greased ice cube. You know, I bet it sounded especially fine to the folks who were listening in on Philco's. If you listen to this program on any other set but a Philco, I come out sounding like Hildegard. <laughs> Well, is that bad? That's grand. That's grand. <laughs> but I want people to hear gravelly, a little bit of old me. And incidentally, Carp, you have just committed radio's cardinal sin. What did I do? You started this whole thing by admitting there are other radios than Philco's on the market. Well, I didn't mention any other names, did I? In this racket, you don't have to. The mere fact that you admit that we have competitors constitutes a schism. Oh, <laughs> Go ahead, Ken. Start talking fast and talk Philco, boy. With pleasure, Bing. You know, Philco has no competitor when it comes to the easiest way to play records ever invented. Only Philco gives you this new automatic way to play records. All play, no work. Just slide your record in and it plays. You'll find this exclusive Philco invention now on three different Philco models. On a new inexpensive console, the 1260. On a table model, the famous 1201 the world's largest selling radio phonograph. And it's even portable, too. Yes, now you can take it with you with Philco's new 1200 automatic record player. Whichever model you want, give this unique invention a whirl at your Philco dealer. It's made by the world's largest radio manufacturer, Philco, famous for quality the world over. Mr. Jack Mass, exploitation coordinator of the Italian-American Publishing Company, whose president is Mr. Frank Sinatra, has long belabored me with copies of the firm's new song. I sing this now with a double purpose. I shall make character with Mr. Sinatra, and I shall get rid of Mr. Mass. Ain't you ever coming back, ain't you? Can't you see the difference? It may. I'm half myself without your kisses. One more night of doing without them will drive me crazy. Won't you make me smile again? Won't you? Just a word is all that it takes. Your to be Oh, ain't you ever coming back to me Ain't you ever coming back Ain't you Can't you see the difference it made I'm half myself without your kisses
That's the first segment of uh, Philco Radio Time from October 29th of 1949, Halloween show with uh, Bing Crosby. And we'll get back to this show in just a moment. Chuck Shaden here in the hall closet, 27 degrees at O'Hare, 26 at Midway, 34 along the lakefront. Humidity is 81%, wind out of the south at 8 miles an hour. It's 19 and a half minutes past 8 o'clock, Northwest Federal Savings Time. Bank open when you're busy and closed when you're not. Northwest Federal Savings knows that a good place to save is ready for you when you're ready. So, Northwest Federal Savings is open 63 hours a week in all the places you might be because there are five convenient Northwest Federal Savings centers throughout Chicagoland's great Northwest Territory. If you're shopping around six corners, there's a Northwest Federal west of Cicero Avenue on Irving Park. Saving in Desplaines, Northwest Federal's just east of the Tri-State on Dempster. Cashing a check in Norridge, well, Northwest is in the Harlem Irving Shopping Center. Live near Edison Park? Save at Northwest just east of the train station. Looking for a loan in Arlington Heights? We're at Algonquin and Gulf. Five convenient Northwest Federal savings locations for all your savings needs. Open 63 hours a week to satisfy them all. Time, 63 hours a week. Now let's return to Philco Radio Time. The first of Philco's guests to show up this evening is a gentleman who for many years has been the most lovable and heartwarming comedian ever to waddle across the stage of the screen. It's a genuine pleasure to roll out the carpet with the very distinguished actor, Mr. Victor Moore. Thank you, Bing, for that wonderful introduction. If I'd known you were going to call me very distinguished, I'd have worn my good conduct ribbon. <laughs> Victor, I didn't know you were an army man. Where did you get a good conduct ribbon? It was given to me by Lee. Robert E. Gypsy Rose. <laughs> If she'd uh, met me 40 years ago, I might not have gotten it. <laughs> oh, I bet you were a tiger with the girlies back in those days, huh? Oh, I was a scalawag, first class. <laughs> Beautiful hunk of man Victor used to Is call that me. right? I was the original. Oh, yeah? Well, that was back at the turn of the century. Yes, darn it. I wish it didn't have a turn. <laughs> I'm not the man I used to be. Uh, don't let it throw you, Vic. If long skirts and bustles can come back, maybe you can, too. Uh, bang, it's a much longer haul back for me than it was for them. <laughs> well, in my last picture, one scene called for me to kiss a girl. Do you know something? What? The director had to call in a stuntman to do it for me. <laughs> I don't, don't tell me a stuntman is really necessary. Yeah, they had to do it at the same time. <laughs> Nowadays, when I get hold of a girl, I won't let go. Ah, <laughs> oh, but, Victor, at least you have your memories. Ah, oh, yes, my memories. What wonderful times I had. You really lived, huh? Yes. I wish that I could have had them transcribed so I could release them at this more convenient <laughs> hour. Say, look, stick around for a while, Victor. Boris Karloff's dropping in, and we're going to set up a Halloween party. Could you join us, maybe? Oh, I'd love to, Bing. Halloween's so much fun, you know. When I see those witches fly by, I get an irrepressible urge to fly right after them. Well, don't you try it. I don't think you get that fuselage off the ground. Yeah. Don't I know it? I have trouble getting it along the ground. <laughs> I got that beat. I do all my walking on tiptoe, Vic. But come, you're not so old now, no, really. No, just how old would you say I am? Well, I'd say you're around 60. I'm not much around the waist, man. <laughs> <laughs> you may not believe this, but I go back to the days when Mickey Rooney was just a kid. <laughs> oh, well, that's before my time, Vic. Yeah. <laughs> Well, gee, the way you talk, a fellow would think you're older than Jolson. Nobody is. No, I don't. <laughs> Jolson was singing on one knee while I was still crawling on both of mine. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, but he's a pretty amazing fella, that Joel. He's going great. Still going great. Got a show of his own now, you know, and a good show, too. Yeah, Al's back singing on one knee again. I'm right back on both of mine. <laughs> Ah, but he's a great man. What a man, that Jolson. He's going to outlive us all. And I include Margaret O'Brien. <laughs> While we're on the subject of singers, Vic, I would like you and the folks to meet a young lady who's younger than Jolson, and whether Jolson will admit it or not, she's much prettier. Miss Gail Robbins. Thank you, Bing. Gail, may I present Victor Moore? Mr. Moore, it's really a pleasure to finally meet you. You know, my grandmother has a picture of you in her album. She does? Yes. You are a beautiful hunk of man Vic, aren't you? Oh, yes. You see, Bang, I'm the original. Okay. <laughs> Imagine this, you know, and Gail's grandma and everything. I'll be diddly dead. It's a small world, isn't it? You know, Mr. Moore, every time Grandmother looks at that picture of you in your bathing suit, she insists the Studebaker people stole their design from you. <laughs> they didn't steal it. I made a beautiful buck modeling for that car. <laughs> Gail, this is your first visit on Philco Radio Time, mm -hmm. as the sponsor likes to call it, so perhaps you'd better acquaint the people with your pipes. Oh, I'd love to, Bing. And your selection? I've got a right to sing the blues. She's got a right to sing the blues. <laughs> well, well, Gail, here's the microphone. Over yonder is John Scott Trotter. Though you'll have to take my word for it, there's a 30 piece orchestra directly in back of him. <laughs> sung with great feeling and understanding. You may take two giant steps. Okay, Bing Crosby, uh, Gail Robbins there on uh, Philco Radio Time, Halloween broadcast from October 29th of 1947. This is Chuck Shaden here on October 28th of 1976 with all the good old radio shows in the mornings here on WXFM 106 on your FM dial. 29 minutes past uh, 8 o'clock. In years gone by, it was uh, Jack Benny on the stage of the great Chicago Theater. Uh, the Ink Spots were there at one time. Remember going down to see the Ink Spots at the stage of the Chicago? Frank Sinatra was on the stage of the Chicago. Danny Kaye, Liberace, 
Peggy Lee and Dave Barber. Oh, remember Professor Backwards used to be on there. He would do that number with the chalkboard up there. Oh, so many great stars. I remember a juggler used to be on the stage. His name was Rudy Cardenas. And he was, I think he must have worked the Chicago Theater every other show there. He would always be juggling on the stage. So many great acts appeared on the Chicago Theater. And before the stage shows, it was Gloria Swanson and Charlie Chaplin on the silver screen. Some of the great uh, big movies of all time, too, broke and opened at the Chicago Theater. And when the silent films were there, uh, the great... Uh, the great Jesse Crawford uh, was accompanying uh, those films with the great pipe organ. You can relive those days on uh, Thursday, November 4th at 8 o'clock when Cato presents Walter Stroney at the console of the famous mighty Wurlitzer pipe organ at the famous Chicago Theater. Walter will play some spotlight solos and accompany a silent film and even a sing-along for you. And we will be there too as master of ceremonies and your guide to a nostalgic evening to the good old days of not so long ago. You're going to hear uh, you're going to hear some of the great radio theme songs played on that mighty Wurlitzer organ. And we're going to have some of the sounds of the great radio shows too and we're going to reminisce a little bit about the great uh, broadcasts of not so long ago and some of the great uh, theaters in Chicago, the neighborhood theaters and the loop uh, theaters and their their backgrounds and their history. Good night coming up next Thursday evening, a week from today, no less, the 4th of November at 8 o'clock at the Chicago Theater. You can still send for advance sale tickets at $3.50 each. Send to Cato, C-A-T-O-E, 6244 West Eddy Street in Chicago, 60634. You can buy your advance sale tickets at the Chicago Theater box office or at our MGM shop at 5120 West Irving Park Road. And if you would like to uh, be part of a group we're getting together to go down to the Chicago by bus, uh, we have bus tickets, $2 for the round trip at our MGM shop. The bus will meet at Northwest Federal at 4901 Irving Park Road on next Thursday evening at 630 and the bus will take you down to the Chicago Theater, drop you off in front of the, right under the marquee there, and uh, go in and enjoy the show, and the bus will be waiting for you when you come back out. Drop you right back at Northwest Federal Savings. Bus tickets, round trip tickets are $2. This is uh, only for our uh, hall closet, and those were the day's listeners. Uh, they're not announcing this bus uh, set up anyplace else, and if you would like to get, you must have a ticket, and you must have a ticket in advance for that bus. Uh, and you can get the tickets, $2 for the round trip at our MGM shop. And we also, of course, have tickets for the uh, the Night of Nostalgia. Those were the days. It's called the Night of Nostalgia at the Chicago Theater, November the 4th. At 8 o'clock it starts. So it's going to be a great evening, and I sure hope that you can join us for that. Uh, if you need more information on that, just give me a buzz uh, at 545-2260. Now let's get back to uh, Philco Radio time. Now, taking up my emceeing cudgels once again, allow me to introduce one of Flicker Corner's finest actors, a gentleman who has raised more hairs than a mother rabbit, Mr. Boris Karloff. <laughs> Boris, you're looking great, brown as a berry. Thank you, Bing. I've been down in Palm Springs. What'd you go out to the desert for? You can get a lot of sunshine right here in town. You know, they're flying it in from Maine with the lobsters. Oh, but I just... <laughs> I just had to get away from Hollywood Bing. My nerves are completely shattered. Well, you had the jitters, huh? Yeah, I've been working the picture with Danny Kay. <laughs> I meant to tell you, I caught DeMille's epic. You know, the picture Unconquered? I saw it last week, and I must tell you, you made a pretty sharp Indian chief. Thank you, Bing. But having to run around with all the feathers stuck in my head, I felt like Hedda Hopper. Well, I enjoyed your performance anyhow. You were very convincing as an Indian. Well, I must have been. I've been invited to pose as the man of distinction by the makers of Kickapoo Joy Juice. <laughs> that old Kickapoo or young Kickapoo? <laughs> Medium Kickapoo. <laughs> That ought to be quite a mess. <laughs> See, I think Hope is going to pose for some of those ads. He's going to be dressed as a washwoman, and he's wringing the juice out of Kelowna's mustache. Oh. 
I wish you hadn't mentioned Mr. Hope's name, though. He frightens me. He sends... <laughs> He sends chills up and down my spine, too, Boris. But what's your beef? Well, I'm afraid of any man who runs around in public with a plastic nose glued on. Say, fellas. Oh, Victor, we got to talking here, and I forgot all about you. Oh, hello, Victor. Hello, Boris. Say, fellas, what are you standing around talking about Bob Hope for? It's Halloween. Let's go out and burn his house down. <laughs> Why, Victor, you little imp. I didn't know Halloween meant so much to you. Oh, yes. Halloween always brings out a fiend in me. <laughs> Look who's a fiend. <laughs> oh, I really am, Boris. You see, it all goes back to my childhood. When I was a boy, I used to sneak in the back door of the butcher shop and feel wet liver. <laughs> People. Come on. Well, I'll go with you, but I'll be bored to tears. Well, I... <laughs> I can't go, fellas. I promised my mother she wouldn't have to bail me out this year. <laughs> oh, your mother won't know about this. I know where there's a great big wooden fence we can fall down. Yeah? Where is it? Around the Gilmore Stadium. <laughs> I really don't think... I don't know. Uh, well, gee, can't we even go out and stick pins in doorbells? Well, I guess it's all right if we do that. Stick pins in doorbells? What's the fun in that? Stick them in people. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. And then we'll stab him with Hope's nose. <laughs> let's do something. Yeah, then let's get some false faces and scare people. Oh, you and Boris get some. I'm all set the way I am. I... Oh, I've got a wonderful mask at home. Makes me look like Peter Lorre. <laughs> Listen, fellas, if you think you can scare people anymore, you're kidding yourself. It's getting so tough now, practically every member of the National Association of Hobgoblins, Ghosts, and Witches... You know what they've done? They've given up Halloween for making monkey shines. They have yeah. been? Oh, this is distressing. Personally, I think it's an excellent idea. But what made them do it? Well, they sent in a song here. I got it right here. It explains the whole thing. There's a copy here for each one of us. And we'll blend our voices in mellifluous harmony. We can dish it out to everybody, huh? Oh, goody. The three of us are going to sing. <laughs> This may be more frightening than my lorry mask. <laughs> I'm a goblin, I'm a very wicked ghost, but conditions are the worst we've ever seen. When we look at all the headlines that they print from coast to coast, we're afraid to leave the house this Halloween. When the kids came home from school on roller skates or wagons, it was sport to follow them and make a noise like dragons. Now the kids in rocket ships go roaring through the clouds. Oh, I tell you, we are shaking in our shrouds. I'm a demon. I'm a werewolf. I'm a snapping, snarling spook. <laughs> and it used to be a pleasure to be mean. But if children love that groaning from a box they call the juke, we, we won't leave our haunted house this Halloween. Song and you're so right. What do you mean, Ken? Said he, knowing full well what to expect. Well, Bing, this year it's really tough on spooks all over. Philco has just thrown a block on the spooks that haunt phonograph records. You know, those pixelated little people that hiss, hum, squeak, and snore through the solo parts and muffle up violins and voices. 
Well, you never hear a peep out of them anymore when your records are played with Philco's new electronic scratch eliminator. This brand new device from the Philco Laboratories lets you hear all the words and music, banishes needle scratch and surface noise from any phonograph record, old or new. No hiss, no squeak, no scratch. It's all music with a blissful background of silence. Take a couple of your records you like best to your Philco dealer now. He'll be glad to demonstrate the Philco Electronic Scratch Eliminator on the Philco 1270 radio phonograph, along with the whole works in radio, including Philco Advanced FM. Go hear the Philco 1270, the last word in radio phonographs from Philco, the leader. Recently, I waxed the tunes with Fred Waring and his fine vocal organization, the Yale Whip and Poop song. Now, we'd like to have Fred's great group with us tonight, but it's impossible. The expense involved, of course, is of no importance to us. It's merely that we shrink from tying up the nation's transportation facilities for a protracted period. I shall go it alone. You'll do anything when you transcribe anything. To the tables down at Morris. To the place where Louis dwells To the dear old temple bar We love so well Sing the whippin' poofs assemble With their glasses raised on high And the magic of their voices Casts its spell Yes, the magic of their singing Of the songs we love so well Shall I waste in And the morning and the rest We will serenade our Louis While life and voice shall last Then we'll pass and be forgotten with a rest. We're poor little lambs who have lost our way. shop for tonight. Before locking the door, I want to thank Boris Karloff, Victor Moore, and Gail Robbins for being with us. It's a pleasure, Bing. Yeah, for me too, Bing, but Boris, I'm very unhappy with you. You haven't said one spooky thing all night. <laughs> Vic's right, Boris. You've been pretty docile. Can't you get just a little sinister before you go? Well, I might invite all of you over to my house for the Halloween party. I'm going to serve a delicacy of my very own. What's that? Frozen blood on a stick. Oh, boy, plasma sickles. <laughs> Say, if it comes in burnt almond, I may join you, kids. 
say being who are your guests next week? Well, it'll be family night, Gail. The Nelsons are dropping in, Ozzie and Harriet. Ozzie says he's got something very important that he wants to talk to me about. I'll be sure to eavesdrop. By all means, do. And good night, Gail. Good night, Bing. Good night, Boris and Victor. Good night. Good night, Bing. Good night, folks, and thanks. Produced and transcribed in Hollywood by Bill Morrow and Murdo McKenzie. Tune in to Philco Radio Time next week and hear Bing Crosby, John Scott Trotter and his orchestra, the Rhythm Airs, and Bing's guests, Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. And don't forget, friends, this week the entire radio industry is celebrating National Radio Week. Crosby on Philco Radio Time, a broadcast from October 29th of 1947, National Radio Week. Uh, so they say National Radio Month is May, but somehow or other, uh, I think uh, National Radio Week was probably promoted by Philco to sell uh, radios back in those days. Na it's, now, it's always National Radio Week with us here in the hall closet. Chuck Shaden with you on WXFM 106 on your FM dial Monday through Friday mornings from 7 until 9. National Radio Week every week, 52 weeks of the year. Ozzie and Harriet are going to be a guest on uh, Bing's show next week. Uh, I don't have that show scheduled in the near future, but we do have tomorrow morning an Ozzie and Harriet show, a Halloween show from October 31st of 1948. The Haunted House is the setting for this Halloween broadcast with the Nelson family. Now you can just, you just take the two ingredients, a haunted house and Ozzie Nelson. And you know that you're in for some fun tomorrow morning. That'll be on shortly after 7 o'clock uh, tomorrow morning. And tomorrow, after uh, in the last hour of our show, after 8 o'clock, Jack Benny show. Jack is uh, back. Jack is back after his uh, illness. And Orson Welles is the guest. Interesting commercial on Philco Radio Time here where they're talking about the, uh, the Philco uh, uh, phonograph with the no scratch, no noise uh, kind of a thing. They were doing a takeoff on the old no-squat, no-stoop, no-squint um, approach to radios that they had earlier where they had the, uh, the dial right up front and the call letters printed on the, uh, the push buttons. That was an earlier thing. But I suspect that this uh, no-scratch, no-surface noise uh, thing on your records was um, probably an early uh, a predecessor of the Dolby system that they have these days to eliminate uh, extraneous noise that pops in on that. An interesting show, a good one, too. I hear Boris uh, Karloff singing a little mystery thing, a blood sickle, holy smoke. <laughs> well, that's the thing for Halloween. Halloween, of course, was the time uh, 38 years ago when Orson Welles was on the air with his famous War of the Worlds program, the radio version of the H.G. Wells story about the Martian invasion. It panicked half the country back in 1938. You may know why when you send for our October cassette special. It's the complete original 60-minute program available this month only and there's not much more of this month for only five dollars from the hall closet box 421 morton grove 60053 this is a super special cassette tape you sure want to have it for your collection the war of the worlds the original send five dollars to the hall closet box 421 morton grove 60053 or pick it up at any office of northwest federal savings our regular october cassette tape of the month features two chillers two other chillers, Frankenstein and The Lodger. These two half-hour shows are available for only $5 from the Hall Closet, Box 421, Morton Grove, 60053. Now, if you would like to have both the October tape, that's Frankenstein and The Lodger, plus our Halloween special, The War of the Worlds, then send $10 to the Hall Closet, or get both tapes at any office of Northwest Federal Savings, or pick them up at our Metro Golden Memory Shop at 5120 West Irving Park Road. But by mail, send to the Hall Closet, Box 421, Morton Grove, 60053. <laughs> Now just look what Ford can do. 
see the brand new Fords for 1977 at Nelson Hirschberg Ford, 5133 West Irving Park Road at Laramie. See all the 77 better idea cars you've been waiting for. And see them all at one of Chicagoland's leading Ford dealers, open seven days a week at Irving Park and Laramie. Nelson Hirschberg Ford. Sunny and warmer, but becoming windy today with a high in the low 50s. Tonight, fair, not quite so cold with a low in the middle or upper 30s. And tomorrow, Friday, beginning of a great weekend, I think, mostly sunny and warmer with a high in the low 60s. It's 34 degrees along the lakefront, 27 at O'Hare, 26 at Midway. Humidity is 81%, wind out of the south at 8 miles an hour. It'll probably be a great weekend until your kids want to go out trick-or-treating and then the then it'll get cold and rainy and windy and crummy. Well, that seems like it's always the way, huh? The fine family of Paterno offers you a selection of fine wines from the vineyards of the world, from California to France, from Italy to Portugal. You'll find the Paterno wine cellar stocked with the widest selection of wines from all the best places. Paterno Foremost Liquors at 5303 Milwaukee Avenue at Central, just north of Foster. It's the largest beverage store of its kind in all Chicagoland. A visit to the Paternal Wine Cellar is an experience you won't forget, and you'll return often to keep your own wine cellar stock. Whether it's an intimate candlelit dinner for two, or an important dinner party for quite a few, you'll find everything you need to add the word special to your next occasion. Visit the wine cellar at Paternal Foremost Liquors, open Monday through Saturday from 9 in the morning till 10 at night, Sunday from noon to 6. Paternal Foremost Liquors at 5303 Milwaukee Avenue at Central, just north of Foster. George Shearing in a nice little group there in the lullaby of Birdland. Chuck Shaden here in the hall closet on WXFM 106 uh, on your FM dial. Here's some logic from Imperial Leasing in Des Plaines. When you buy our cassette tape of the month for $5, you get an hour's worth of really great radio entertainment. When you lease the cassette tape from Imperial for $245, you get an hour's worth of really great radio entertainment. Plus a 1977 Mark V equipped with an AM and FM stereo radio cassette player. That's right. You can lease our cassette of the month from Imperial at 900 East Rand Road in Des Plaines and get our tape of the month on wheels. Be the first in your block to lease the cassette tape of the month. 
Get a quality AM and FM stereo cassette player and the 1977 Mark V, all for just $245 a month. Call 298-0011. What's that? Oh, they're ready. Okay, we have, um, we've made a line, we have a, a line, a broadcast line out to Imperial Leasing in this Plains now. And the, um, the gals in the office out there, the bookkeeping staff, secretaries, and that, they had a little talent show. They had a little talent uh, get-together. Their, their version of the, uh, the Morris B. Sachs Amateur Hour, only this is the, uh, uh, the Sal Benjamin Amateur Hour over there. And they, had, they have a winner. And they asked if it would be possible for us to broadcast the, uh, the, uh, the most talented um, uh, gal at, the, uh, at Imperial Leasing in the Plains, a, a, program, a, a song. She wants to do a song. And I said, well, there's not enough, we don't have facilities in the studio here. And they said, no, we'll have a line out there, and they'll do it. They bring a piano in, and they do the whole thing. So we're set now. I knew it was going to come at this time. So we take it out of Imperial Leasing, and here is the winner of the Imperial Leasing Talent Contest. Father has a business strictly second hand. Everything from toothpicks to a baby grand. Stuff in our apartment came from Father's store. Everything I'm wearing, someone wore before. Nothing to say. That's the uh, the winner of the uh, the Imperial Leasing Talent Contest. As you can see, they must have a tremendous amount of talent out there. Stay with Leasing Cars, gang. Now you can get your whole house magic is clean, and also get a helping hand with the laundry. Hi, this is Carmelita Pope with good news. Right now, with any magic hist order, you'll get a bottle of Ego Liquid the heavy-duty one-step laundry detergent at no extra charge. With Ego, there's no need for pre-soaks and sprays. Of course, Magicist is the recognized expert when it comes to cleaning. So, have Magicist clean your carpeting and furniture in home or office. Or have Magicist call for, clean, and deliver your rugs and draperies. Save 20% for cash and carry. Bank cards are welcome. And Magicist sells rugs, too. Come clean now and get your quart bottle of Ego heavy-duty liquid laundry detergent at no extra charge. Chicago phones 378-8600. Suburbs see the white pages. Well, 
while. The old clock up on the studio wall says it's time to go for now. We'll be back again tomorrow, same time, same station, with more sounds of entertainment from the hall closet. Tomorrow morning, Ozzy and Harriet in a Halloween show, and uh, Jack Benny and uh, his guest Orson Welles. Don't forget Saturday afternoon on our Those Were the Days program, we have Halloween with Arch Obler. We'll have uh, a lot of great uh, Halloween sounds for you. Stories called The Voice Within Me, The House is Haunted, Holiday 1940X, Money, Money, Money. We're going to have The Chicken Heart and The Dark, the story where the bodies are turned inside out. And our guest will be Arch Obler, drawing a word picture of his career and uh, helping us to chill you with a chilling afternoon of great uh, mystery. Halloween with Arch Obler, Saturday afternoon from 1 to 5 on WNIB. Chuck Shaden here. In the hall closet on XFM, thanks for listening. Hello, I'm Barbara Hale from Manna. And I'm Danny Davis. And the Nashville Brass. And have we got something for you. A special bicentennial stereo album we made exclusively for a Manna called America, 200 Years Young. Tell the folks how to get one, Barbara. Just go to your Amana retailer and ask him to show you the full line of Amana upright freezers and Amana deep freeze chest freezers and ask your Amana man to explain how much you can save a year buying meat on sale, freezing vegetables in season. And then ask for your stereo bicentennial album with Danny Davis and the Nashville Brass, a $6.95 value for only a dollar. There you have it. Two great money savers. Amana freezers with that great amount of quality and a stereo album of Danny Davis and the Nashville Brass for a dollar. You'll find a manna and your Danny Davis stereo album at Pope Brothers All Stores. This is WXFM Elmwood Park in Chicago at 106 on FM. It's 9 o'clock. The world's largest selection of beautiful new 1977 Cadillacs is on display right now at Mac Cadillac 303 West Rand Road in Mount Prospect. Every model, every style, every comfort is yours at Mac. Mac Cadillac has served Chicago with the best deals for 50 years. You'll find the highest trade-ins, the largest selection, and the best deals at Mac Cadillac, 303 West Rand Road in Mount Prospect. Experience the new 1977 Cadillac Seville. Feel the plush interior, the smooth, quiet ride. Compare its resale value with other cars in its class. There isn't a better deal to be found, and there isn't a better place to find it than Mac Cadillac. Find out why Mac Cadillac has more friends in the Chicagoland area than any other dealer. Immediate delivery, and they're open on Sunday. Stop by Mac Cadillac, 303 West Rand Road, in Mount Prospect. Now it's time to go out to Oak Park, and uh, here's Cliff Johnson. All right, well, then here's what you do. In about... Uh one minute from now, call up. Okay. Thank you much. Bye-bye. Hello? Ron, are we on? Very pleasant. Good morning, Cliff. Good morning. <clears throat> the chief of police, uh, wait till I get this harness on. I, it gets a little noisy. I, uh, we got a new thing out here this year on um, Halloween, and um, I wanted to get the chief of police on Wilbur uh, Reichard. Uh, Oak Park has adopted a resolution to limit Halloween activities, and particularly the trick-or-treating, to Friday, October 29. Uh, there are a lot of things that are built into this uh, recommendation by the Board of Trustees. Um, I don't know, kids just aren't safe running around when they're eight, nine years old or younger, or even older. After dark, trick-and-treating, all sorts of silly things are happening these days, and maybe it's a sad commentary on the whole structure of our society, but that would be coming by. My coffee pot in the background, I, one of those new jobs, you know, where you pour the water in, you push a button, it's stopped now, but it sounds like an old uh, uh, night. We had a car called a night once. Two people on the line. Good morning. Good morning. Cliff. Yes, Cliff. Oh. Uh, Cliff? Yeah. This is Chief Riker. Ah, uh, Chief Riker. Who else is on the line? Yes, me and you. Uh, Jim Doss from Recreation. Oh, Jim Doss Recreation. Jim, stay on. Uh, say good morning to Chief Reichert. Good morning. Good morning. Well, because, Jim, I know that you and I are going to chat about uh, the Blackhawk game. Right. But uh, uh, why don't you do this? Call back in about five minutes, uh, same number. I want to chat with the Chief about Halloween, okay? Beautiful. Thanks. Thank you, Jim. Bye-bye.
I want to be sure which line you're on here now, uh, Chief. Hello, Chief? Chief? Yeah, okay. There you are. Okay. All right. Uh, they've got a Blackhawk uh, game coming up over at the Recreation Department, and young Jim Doss wants to tell about that. Listen, I was particularly interested, Chief Reichert, after 30-some years in the community, with my five kids growing up and trick-and-treating, and I used to go along with them. Uh, there are some things that are built in this new idea, I think, that the trustees and the president have presented to you and your group, mm -hmm. that trick-and-treating shall be limited to Friday, October 29. What's behind this, Chief? Well, uh, with the Halloween being over the weekend, we didn't, uh, we figured that Sunday would probably be a bad day, and uh, we'd like to limit it to one evening. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things I think people should be aware of is that if they take their youngsters out trick or if they let, allow their youngsters go out trick or treating, they should go with them. Right. And uh, if they wear a costume, it should be a you know a light material. And if it's not, uh, put some reflecting tape on it so that in case they are near the street or something, that somebody driving down the street because of the darkness, they can very easily be seen. Uh, same way uh, to the youngsters, they should, if they're crossing streets, they should make sure they take off their masks to. Uh, be able to look and see traffic come in and wait, and wait until the traffic goes by and uh, then cross the street. We want them to have a good time, but we don't want them to get injured. Uh, well, Chief, you know that even 20 years ago, uh, Mrs. Johnson and I took went along with our children, even when they were up to 10 or 12 years old, because silly things happen when a bunch of kids get together. Not only will they dash across the street, but they'll jump up on somebody's porch. Uh, people who don't understand Halloween, too, you know. That's true, and I think what they should do is, uh, is if the porch light is on, you know, go up and knock on the door. If it isn't on, uh, maybe leave that house go by, because you never know. There may be someone that's sick in a home or someone that doesn't understand Halloween and doesn't want to be bothered. Uh, those are the, you know, those people you want to leave alone. Let them enjoy their peace and quiet. Mm -hmm. uh, same way with the, any treats that they get, if it's not wrapped or anything like that, they... Uh, the parents should look it over, and if they find anything wrong with it, definitely call us. Uh, we don't expect this type of thing, but sometimes it does happen. And the same way, uh, the parents shouldn't let them eat their treats on the street until they've been inspected. That's right. We used to make our kids come home and dump it all out on the carpet floor, and then we'd sort through it. And we'd find a neat little thing, a rock even rat, because, you know, there are pranksters. That's true. There are evil people, but there are also pranksters, Chief. Right. And, and so it's a very good thought. I just really feel, too, that we've got a lot more bodies floating around this crazy world than in the United States now, and a lot more, I don't know, loose freedom thinking. I, I don't feel too safe for my kid out any night alone after 10 o'clock or 9. I don't. I, I think it's a good idea that, uh, you know, the youngsters should be restricked to a time that they have to be home. They right. have to go to school, they've got, you know, they have to study, things like that. And I think they should be in at a certain time. Right. Uh, it eliminates, uh, the, the majority of the, of the young people are not troublemakers, but, it in, you know, if they're in a group, uh, things can happen. And if they're in at a certain time, it eliminates them, I think, mm. getting into right. problems. Chief, one of these days, by appointment to your people, I'd like to get on. We, we get a lot of praise for the Oak Park Police Department, and we get a few rhubarbs, but for the most part, they're a great bunch of guys, and, and uh, it's a fine police force. I'd like someday to do a rather in-depth 10 or 15-minute description of uh, how 911 works and all the different ways that, that services are available to people. Well, fine. Sure, I think we we'll, can work we'll, some. We'll set that up so that it's within policy bounds. Okay. And I appreciate your coming on today. Thank you, Chief. All right, sir. Bye-bye. That's Jim Reichert, Chief of Police. Good morning. Cliff Johnson, Newsline. Uh, Cliff, this is Earl Carr again at Oak Park High School. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, and I want to introduce to you Mr. Joe Perillo. Okay. Joe is in charge of our DECA program and distributive education. Uh, what I want to do... Uh, okay, go ahead, because Jack Swanson's coming on in about uh, three minutes. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Joe's Mr. on the other line. Hi. Hi, how are you? Yeah, Mr. Perillo? Yes. I know that uh, DECA means that a child can earn credit by working a half day and going to school a half day. Is that the basis of it? Yes, it is, basically. What, tell us about our Oak Park program. 
Well, the program is set up for students who have an interest in learning some kind of marketing skill. Basically, most of them have an interest in business of some sort. And then in the classroom, which I teach first period, the students uh, receive instruction in marketing type skills, learning display, uh, advertising, retailing, salesmanship skills. Then later in the year, we will be talking about going out for job interviews and developing resumes and things like that. And at the beginning of the year, which we just completed, uh, it's sort of an overview on how marketing fits into the whole spectrum of business and, and our free enterprise system and the economy. Hey, that's a good idea. I think so, too. Uh, listen, Mr. Corrigan and uh, Mr. Carrillo, I have a travel agency, and I'll tell you what I'd like to do, and it would be an interesting um, arrangement. We can broadcast about it on the air. If you have a couple of bright young gals, who knows some history and geography, I'd, uh, Mrs. Johnson and I and the staff would be glad to take on a gal uh, working on phones and learning something about travel. It's an exciting world. Oh, that would be marvelous. That would fit in with my work experience program. Yeah, sure. That would be great for us. Uh, let, me get, let me get busy on it. Yeah, what you have to do is get someone that really likes people mm -hmm. and, you know, has got a good countenance about them. Okay. But also, uh, I don't mean some bookworm now. You know no, what I mean. No, no, someone who's outgoing. Outgoing, but also th that history and geography uh, uh, is very important. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, when they start out, all they'll do is answer phones, and then the people will say, where are you going? They'll say, Cliff Johnson Travel Service, may I help you? And then they'll direct it to an agent. Mm -hmm. If it's Hawaii or, you know, Europe, they know who does the best job of one of our counselors. Okay. Uh, but this is how they learn. Sure, sure. sure. Then they listen in, you see, and they hear how we handle it. Well, we're trying to establish uh, uh, new career education to get uh, kids out of, or into the community and get the community sure. to the kids. So. Well, we'd be glad to do that. And I tell you, Jack Swanson is going to be calling here in about two seconds. Okay. We'll but, get off the line so he can have it. But thank you very much for uh, having us. Yeah, and let's, let's follow up now with that with Fordeca. I'd like to get in on the program. Okay. Sounds great. Okay. Thanks yeah. very much. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. It's a good idea. You know, uh, so many youngsters in high school just are never going to go on to college. Uh, those of us who went to college and graduated and uh, tucked away a Bachelor of Arts degree, as I did, it's, it's invaluable, but I sure found out that it was nothing more than a little framework. Uh, it would have been a great opportunity for me uh, in high school. It was in my freshman year in college that I started uh, in radio. Well, really the senior year, uh, singing, but uh, what a great help it would have been.